Hi, my name is Alexandra Joel. I'm here at Booktopia, and I'm delighted to be talking about my lifelong passion for fashion. I'm getting prompting from the wings. <laughs> <laughs> I assume you've seen their exhibition? Mm. I have two of my outfits in it. Oh, great. Okay. That, that's how close to the exhibition I am. <laughs> <laughs>
Dior's news. Although they had a great falling out when she became the model for the French statue of their symbol, Marianne. So they had been the lovers to them, but I'm sure he forgave her. In this wonderful book, Inez gives all the basic rules for that wonderful pared down Parisian look where you can never go wrong. So she will advise the right trench coat, the right white shirt, the right pair of jeans, and just the right sort of key accessories that make you stand out from the crowd. I love Inez, her style is this book, Chanel again, is Chanel's Riviera by Anne de Corsi. Now, not only do I have a passion for fashion, but I love the social history that goes around with it. And in this book, Anne very cleverly winds in the glamour of the Riviera with what it was like to live in France under occupation by the Germans. It's quite fascinating to follow Chanel's path. She created a beautiful villa on Riviera, Riviera called La Posa. But in fact, back in Paris, she lived in the Ritz and she attracted a huge amount of controversy because the person with whom she shared her suite was a German officer. Read all about it in this book because it's full of fabulous gossip and really you won't want to stop reading it. Now this fantastic book covers the entirety of the catwalk collections from the great Christian Dior's first in 1947 when he shocked the world with a new look up until current day. So if you can imagine during wartime, the time that Anne de Corsi writes about, there was stringent regulation of fabric. So the clothes were skimpy, the suits were boxy, the look was very masculine. Suddenly, in 1947, the great Christian Dior introduced the new look. It had tiny little shoulders, minute waists, and enormous skirts of sumptuous fabric. And the world went mad. It was the first time that fashion dominated the front pages. Sadly, Christian Dior lived for only 10 years, but each collection was superb. Since then, other designers have worked in the house and they have carried on his great foundation. One of the things that is fascinating to know, and I will tell you about in a minute, are the two people that he took on very early in their career who became two of the most famous, internationally known and celebrated designers. Here we have Yves Saint Laurent, the Scandal Collection of 1971. Now many people would not know that in fact, Yves Saint Laurent was taken on as a very young, very shy man by Christian Dior when he won a competition for a dress that he designed. And in that same stellar intake was Karl Lagerfeld, who designed a coat and of course, went on to orchestrate the rebirth of Chanel in the late 80s. Why was this the scandal collection? Because what he did was he actually brought back an exaggerated wartime look with square shoulders, with what he called the chubbies, they were chubby fur coats, uh, he had strappy ankle strap shoes, bright red lips, and the good ladies of Paris who used to more state suits thought that 
the collection he desired looked as if it should be on street walkers. Well, that furore lasted for all of about a month until the entire world embraced it and everybody wore that particular look. Just looking at this book, you know it must be about Hermes because that distinctive, wonderful, pumpkin colour is the shade that we all identify with that house. It's a charming book, um, mainly of illustrations. I adore this one. The caption is, for the perfect accessory, to a fashionable outdoor. So she's actually wearing an orange Hermes scarf around her face, um, looking as if she's about to stick up a bank. Probably not what the normal Hermes customer does, but maybe to buy things there you might need to do that. So the great thing about Hermes is its classicism. Hermes began as a savoury. In its DNA, are beautiful leather goods and the most wonderful saddles and riding boots, which occasionally they still make for special customers. Of course, since then, Hermes has been known for its very refined clothing. But I guess the symbol that is most closely associated with it is the iconic Hermes scarf. And any woman who has aspirations to Parisian style, the first item on the list must be an Hermes scarf. That is what I recommend. This magnificent book is called Prada Catwalk. The first book I spoke about was Australian. Most of the books have been French, but of course Miuccia Prada is Italian. And she has this wonderful style that you see in the streets of Milan and Rome. And one of the things that she has really put forward is a new kind of modernity. So that she will put in a very glamorous coat, but pair it with a clunky pair of shoes. She will create a dress, but it's a dress that doesn't necessarily show off the body, but shows off the beauty of the fabric. Miuccia is what I call an intellectual designer and eternally inventive. If you too have a passion for fashion, and let's face it, who doesn't? And if you want to go behind the scenes in one of the greatest fashion ateliers in the world, Christian Dior, then why don't you read The Paris Model? It will take you on a beautiful journey that very few people see, but you're able to read about right here 